secondly, by atheism, I mean the view that God does not exist. On the atheist view, there is no such being or person as God. The claim that God does not exist is just as much a claim to know something as is the claim that God does exist. Therefore, if Mr. Zindler is to maintain that the evidence points toward atheism, he's got to do more than just say there's no good evidence for God's existence. He must present evidence against God's existence. He's therefore simply mistaken when he says in the Tribune that atheism makes no claims, and so it has nothing to defend. Atheist philosophers have tried for centuries to disprove the existence of God. I most immediately disagree with my opponent, however, as to what atheism is. Atheism, uh, in the Greek word from which it derives, is uh, a condition being without God, without God belief. And so an atheist is nothing more nor less than a person who does not believe in God. As such, it asserts nothing, and as such, it need defend nothing. I hate to correct him about his definition of atheism, but he's simply wrong. Atheism is not just the absence of belief in God. Let me turn to the standard work in the field of philosophy, uh, standard reference work, the Encyclopedia of Philosophy. It quotes, according to the most usual definition, an atheist is a person who maintains that there is no God. In contrast, an agnostic maintains that it is not known or cannot be known whether there is a God. Mr. Zindler has clearly confused agnosticism with atheism. Uh, and the debate tonight is supposed to be over atheism, the proposition that there is no God. And so I invite him again, defend that point of view. I've come here to debate, give me some arguments for atheism so that I can deal with them. Madeline Murray O'Hare in an interview on Life magazine said that uh, agnostics are just atheists without guts uh, <laughs> because they're afraid to speak up. So we're not here to just talk about agnosticism. I want to hear the arguments for atheism. Why is that important? Well, simply this. Even if all the evidence that I gave for Christianity is wrong, that doesn't prove that God does not exist. Kai Nielsen, an atheist philosopher, writes, to show that an argument is invalid or unsound is not to show that the conclusion of the argument is false. All the proofs of God's existence may fail, but it still may be the case that God exists. In short, to show that the proofs do not work is not enough by itself. It may still be the case that there is a God. So he's got to give us a positive case for why God does not exist. Now, he hasn't done it in that first speech. That first speech could have been given by uh, a Hindu, a Buddhist, an agnostic, even a deist, somebody who believes in God but doesn't believe in Christianity. There was nothing in that first speech that denied even the existence of God uh, or even called it into question. So again, I want to invite him in the next speech to give us some evidence why we should think that atheism is true. Getting back to uh, what is an atheist, I'm sorry that my opponent... Uh, keeps thinking that I should try to prove a universal negative. But I would say <clears throat> that the idea of atheists, theists, and agnostics as three categories is sort of an old-fashioned idea. Uh, once upon a time, it is the case that atheists said there is no God, theists said there is a God, and agnostics says, I don't know, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But the problem with that was that <clears throat> we saw that the ideas of gods evolved to such sophistication that they became meaningless. Let me explain. The, the gods in which people claim to believe nowadays are so ephemeral, so elusive, that you cannot define them really, and you cannot imagine a way that you could test for their existence or not. Once upon a time when God lived on Mount Olympus, we were able to check out whether he really did or not. But a lot of people climbed Mount Olympus, and so the priests got wise, and they said, well, you know, Zeus is permanently out to lunch, he doesn't live here anymore. And so the God idea today is, is just totally impalpable. You cannot grasp it. You cannot test it. I could do a simple test, say, well, if there is a God within the next uh, two minutes, he will strike me dead here on the podium, and that will be a sign to you that there is a God. Now, I'm relatively confident that's not going to happen. And 
when I am still here talking about it two minutes and two seconds from now, and I say, well, I guess that shows there was no God, you will say, well, no, you know, my God isn't going to get involved with your silly ideas, with your silly tests. My God is above that sort of thing. It's sort of like the indetectable gremlins on Saturn, however. You can't imagine a way that you could test for the indetectable gremlins on Saturn. If you flew there with the best gremlinometers that NASA could provide, you still wouldn't find them because they are, by definition, undetectable. And the God of Christianity has evolved into something that is essentially undetectable, and we cannot do anything with it. Now, that is not really a weakness for the atheist. The atheist now says all of these statements about God are basically meaningless. We can't, we can't handle them in any meaningful way. Now, lest you think that this is a weakness for the atheist, I would challenge you with this idea. Let me say I've just been convinced by my opponent that yes, indeed, there is a God. And I'm it. And, moreover, I created all of you just three minutes ago with all the false memories thinking that you actually came here for the beginning of the show. Now, <clears throat> can you disprove that? No, you can't. Uh, you cannot imagine a way, really, that you could disprove that because everything you would do, I could claim, was actually part of my divine intent. You could say, well, I will torture you into confessing that you are not a god. And I would say, well, I'll pretend to be tortured, but I'll get even with you after you die. You're going to burn for that. Uh, you could perhaps uh, uh, get me to say something else that would seem compromising. But in my divine knowledge, I would be just pretending all of this. I might even pretend to die if you uh, chose to torture me excessively. But I would, get, I would get even with you somewhere later on in eternity. Now, what would you do with this? You can't handle that. And so, atheism is simply the absence of God belief because it is meaningless to say that you believe in a God. We would have to know the particulars. We've still yet to hear any good reason to think that God does not exist. Don't use up my time here. Mr. Zinger says you can't prove a universal negative. That's false in the first place. Of course you can. For example, uh, uh, you could disprove the statement that there are polka-dotted geese. Uh, that, uh, that would be a universal negative. You can disprove that. But in, more importantly, the statement that God does not exist is not a universal negative. It's a singular negative statement. And certainly you can uh, prove negative singular statements, such as there is no planet between uh, Venus and the Earth you can provide arguments uh, to show that a singular negative statement is true. But he hasn't done it. But he says the idea of God is so impalpable. Uh, now, look, if this is not just going to be a sort of village atheism where you say, well, I can't see and touch and hear God so he doesn't exist, uh, you've got to have a better objection than that. He, perhaps Mr. Zindler is saying, well, because God can't be verified, this is a meaningless statement that God exists or that God does not exist. Indeed, he seems to indicate this in some of his writings. This is based, however, upon a verificationist theory of meaning, which is simply false and self-refuting. Number one, this type of theory of meaning would not only eliminate God's statements, it would eliminate ethical statements, aesthetic statements, many metaphysical statements, and many scientific statements, like statements about quarks, uh, strings, other high-level uh, theoretical entities in science. Secondly, even worse, this verification theory of meaning is self-refuting. If you say to be meaningful, a proposition must be verifiable, what about that very proposition? Is it verifiable? Well, no, it's just an arbitrary definition. So that it was very soon realized that this verification theory of meaning, if it were true, it's meaningless. So that it's a self-refuting theory. And therefore, this verification theory of meaning that Mr. Zindler is propounding has been abandoned universally today by epistemologists, theorists of knowledge. So that it is not at all absurd to say uh, that you have to give some sort of argument against God if you're going to maintain atheism. 
He says, well, maybe I'm, I'm God. Well, I think this just trivializes the debate this evening. Uh, Mr. Zindler obviously didn't bring about the origin of the universe or design it. He's not the source of absolute moral value. If we're going to have a serious debate, I think we need to weigh the alternatives uh, that are really credible. Uh, we're told that the, meta -verif that the verification principle is passé, but curiously, he did not do anything to try to refute the simple truth that I am God and created you all three minutes ago. Uh, the only way you can get out of that dilemma is if this verification is principle or something very similar to it is, is correct. And it is not indeed a meta statement uh, that uh, it, that statement itself is unverifiable. It is simply an observation. This is how we do, in fact, determine whether we can make sense out of anything, uh, is if we can imagine a way, at least in principle, that we could test it. And those things that we can't even imagine a way to test, we just shrug off and go on to something else. And again, the problem of universal negative, uh, there are many, 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 many gods that have been claimed. And how to uh, disprove all of them, I wouldn't imagine to know. Uh, with regard to polka-dotted geese, that is also a universal uh, negative to try to disprove that somewhere in the universe at some time there never was a purple or polka-dotted goose. So I'm not going to try to disprove that one either. Pur purple polka-dotted geese and gods are both a little bit tough to handle in this, in this sense. We've not heard a single argument to show that God does not exist. Now, Mr. Zindler says that you don't need to do this because the proposition that God exists or does not exist is meaningless. Atheism is just as meaningless as theism uh, on this view. And I said, but that's self-refuting. He says, no, this is just how we use language. That's not the case. Remember I said if you use this verification principle of meaning, you cut out ethics, you cut out uh, aesthetics, you cut out metaphysics, you cut out many realms of theoretical science. The uh, verification principle of meaning is simply false, and that's why it's universally rejected today. He says, but what if I say I am God and created you? The problem with that assertion is not that it's meaningless. The problem is that it's false. It is meaningful, and it's false. That's the point. Uh, but the question is, what evidence do we have to show that there is no God at all? He hasn't given us any. Well, 